how do democracies become oligarchies and then eventually oligarchic tyrannies? Well, there's actually a process, and I lay it out here. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to our channel. Revenge of the, of the billionaires. I mean, this, this uh, uh, it's published. Right now, it's, it's over at Truth Dig, um, the, the website Truth, Truth Dig. And I, I start by talking about how the current issue of the Atlantic is titled How to Stop a Civil War. And every article, well, I, I, actually, I haven't, I've got my copy of it. I haven't read every single article in the magazine, but all of the articles I've read so far are about a second civil war. I'm guessing that probably all of them are. And in my opinion, what's happening here is that we are now no longer a functioning democracy. Now, I think it's possible for us to get back to being a functioning democracy, but I don't think that we've been a genuine functioning democracy since somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s. Because you define a democracy as a country where the will of the people is enacted into law. The policy of the government is what the people want. That's, a, that's the most simple explanation of democracy. Aristotle said that, um, so let me see if I can find the exact quote here, because I've got it in my article, but it must be on page two. Um, so anyhow, Ar I, you know, I can't, can't quickly find it, so I'll, I'll just tell you from memory. Aristotle basically said you know, that a tyranny is where the government serves the tyrant, right? Uh, you know, a, a, a kingdom is where the government serves the king. A, an oligarchy is where the government serves the rich, the oligarchs. And a democracy is where government serves the people, the demos, which is Greek for people. Now, there's three, three things that are necessary to take down a democracy and replace it with an oligarchy, which has happened, you know, hundreds of times in the, in the 3,000 years since the Greek democracy. And in fact, this is how the Greek democracy was taken over. The first is control of or substantial influence over the principal, a, you know, critical portion of the media. When the oligarchs control the media, you're on the way toward oligarchy. Number two, the legalization of the bribery of public officials. This happened late in the, in the, in the death of the Greek democracy. It happened rel relatively early in the Roman um, experiment with democracy. What this does is it allows the oligarchs to achieve majority control of the legislative process so they can pass laws that only benefit themselves. And number three is take control of critical parts of the, of the, uh, le the court system so that you can, when you're challenged, you can win in court. Now, once, and all three of these things have happened now in the United States. And then the fourth element, once you've got that and you're starting to dig deeper and deeper, and once the oligarchs start deep, digging deeper and deeper and deeper into society and culture, buying more and more media, more and more politicians, more and more of the court system, then you begin using the criminal justice system against your enemies. You have, you have the criminal justice system investigate the investigators. You go after the good cops and turn everything into bad cops, which of course is what Bill Barr is trying to do right now with the Justice Department, going after Peter Strzok and James Comey and all these guys. And Rush Limbaugh and the whole right-wing hate media are just cheerleading. That's how you turn a democracy into an oligarchy, and then you turn that oligarchy into a tyrannical oligarchy.